Psalms 127. And I want you to read verse 2. Read it out loud so the whole world can hear you. On all the men and all the hard workers to hear this. It is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat, for God gives rest to his loved ones. Amen. Can you read it one more time? It is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat, for God gives rest to his loved ones. Read that one part. For God gives rest to his loved ones. Jesus. Here's why I want that red. You don't need another job. You need rest. You don't need another job. You need rest. Amen. It is useless to work so hard. Here, it ain't me. I've been telling y'all this in my words. Now hear God's words. It is useless to be sitting here having five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven jobs trying to make ends meet. Because the Bible just said, what, Elder? God gives you rest. God gives you rest. How are you going to be a good man, a good husband, a good father, a good leader, a good person if you don't get rest? so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, Father God, in Jesus' name, I pray your name be kept holy. Continue to teach us how to keep your name holy. I pray that you forgive us this morning. Clean us out so that we can hear from you. I pray Luke 24 will be a people. Open our eyes to see you, our ears to hear you, our hearts to receive you. Open our minds to understand your scriptures. 
I pray right now you open our mouth to repeat your word and praise your name. Lord, I pray John 17, 17 over us. Sanctify us by your truth, for your word is truth. Give us the message that people need to hear and allow us to articulate it as clearly as possible. I pray that you pierce the hearts of your people. Amen. God, and lead them back to repentance and to believe in you. I pray right now that you become more and more all to us. And we give you all. I pray for obedience to the leading of your Holy Spirit. Overall, Holy Spirit lead us into convictions of sin and God's righteousness. Lead and guide us into all truth. Tell us about the future and bring back to our remembrance all things. I pray this, Lord, that we can remember who you are in these last and evil days and keep our allegiance to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Before you sit down, can you shout out two things? Say, transform the culture. Transform the culture. And then look at somebody you may not know and say, love is an action word. Love is an action word. Come on, tell somebody else, love is an action word. Love is an action word. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible is the only love story that the Christian interprets where God does everything and the believer does nothing. The Bible is the book that believers read and they say that God is demanded to love me, but the Bible is not pushing them or convicting them to love God back. This is the hour where we got more gym. Give me Jimmy's in the church. Give me Jimmy. We look at God like he's Jimmy. Give it to me, Jimmy. Give it to me. I need everything. Give it all to me. Give it all. I need new. I need peace. I need love. I give it all to me. And now when he honors his word and give it to you, you don't give nothing back to him because the scripture says, love the Lord with all your heart, your mind, and with all your strength. Jesus said, if you love me, you will do what? Keep my commandments. But here's the thing, we're in an hour where God, or I should say people, preachers and leaders are telling us to do more Jimmy Gimmies to God than we giving God what he requires from us. And so here's the thing, you can have a one-sided relationship and get nothing, or you can have a two-way relationship and get everything. Because God is going to be faithful to his word. You got to just be in obedience to his word so that you can get everything. It's the reason why the Bible uses the word all. Say all. all. When you say all, you're not asking people to give you some. Right. You're not asking people to give you a percentage. You're asking people to give you everything they have. Right there, give me all your money. I don't expect him to stand up and empty his pockets. I expect him to empty his pockets, go home and get the money under his mattress, go to his bank account, make all the withdrawals, go to the people that owe him money and start collecting. I expect him to start thinking about all his money. Yeah. If I say all. Uh, See, but the crazy part is, love the Lord with all your heart. That means nobody else matters. This walk, this Christian walking, it involves people, but the source is not about people. Why do people have more parts of your heart than God? To the point, most of our prayers is conditioned around people and not God himself. We're praying, Lord, help me get through what people did versus, Lord, help me to get to what you said. It's crazy. We change the about people and not about God. Yeah. And this is where we're challenging you this morning. I don't ex I'm not expecting you to be perfect. None of us are perfect. That's why we have his, his Holy Spirit to make us walk in his perfection. Yes. Yes. That's why we have it. Because without his Holy Spirit, we're all trash. Yes, we're trash. Say, I'm trash. <laughs> let your flesh hear it and let your flesh, flesh get an attitude because you said it. Say, I'm trash. I'm trash. Because if you don't tell your flesh that, your flesh is going to stand up and say, guess what? I'm God. Obey me. Oh you need to do, reverse the role and tell your flesh, I'm trash. I need somebody to make, to make a trash man out of me. To make a dumpster truck out of me. And I can't do that by doing it within me. I need a different 
source. And you can sit here and say, oh, well, I won't be no trash man. Trash men make a lot of money, Brother Lewis. They make a lot of money. But you know what one thing trash men don't get? They don't get respect. Amen. Because when people throw their trash out, they expect the trash man to pick up every piece. But they don't expect the trash man, right? You know, they did not come pick up the trash. Why am I saying this? Because God wants to transform us into something we will always conditioned to be. Well, his original design, holiness, perfection, so that we can display his glory. Now check this out real quick. Y'all look at Brother Christian real quick. See, Brother, Brother Christian, you know what I mean? He's a great man. He's a great father. If my mic is wrong today, his son broke it. <laughs> <laughs> Carter, we grabbed those mics yesterday I heard and was just like throwing them all around. <laughs> no, I just had to put that in there because I heard the static this morning. <laughs> no, it's good. But we have to get there. We have to get to this place where we respect God again. Amen. And I was watching Pastor John preach yesterday and something he said just triggered you know, like a different, like, push in me. He said, we have now entered the hour where people, are, the, the counterfeit Messiah is about to be seen. Wow. Jesus. And the crazy part is, when you start putting truth to perspective, we see that now. Yeah. How many people are walking around being powerful versus biblical? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. This is real. I gotta sit here, Brother Gio, I feel God telling me to tell you to stand up because there's ten If you allow me to see it, you gave me authority, but I gotta understand, I need to be in you to use that authority. I can't turn it on and off when I want to. I gotta be in you, because guess what? If I think I can turn it on when I want to, I'm in control of the gift that he told us that only the Holy Spirit distributes. At its will. If the Holy Spirit is distributing it out at his will, then that means when he sees fit. When you're in the right mindset, Right. And here's the thing. Can I, I just want to feel this so strong. God is not going to tell you to operate in his gifts and you don't have his fruits. The one thing when we get saved, your fruits need to show up first before you can handle a gift. You're not going to appreciate the gift until the fruits are seen because you need fruits to be able to operate in the gift. I can't prophesy to you if I don't love you. I can't.
Why don't people want to come to your church? Why don't people don't want, want to receive your prayer? Why don't everybody sitting here in your family going through hell and back? But ain't nobody calling looking for your number. And you're the believer. You are the believer. And you get bypassed when it comes down to we, who will pray over Sister Sally in the hospital? Well, we going to skip over EK. She don't really believe what she's saying she got. Because just last week, EK was on the phone with me complaining. She was on the phone with me cussing out. Destroy it real quick. You know how you do. 
some water. But God gives the increase. Why is that important? Your fruits should show up before you do. Before you get in an attitude, your love should, should be activated for people. We don't know what that young man went through. But you know what he left with outside of all the baby oil jokes? You know what he got left with? Jesus loved me. And that broke his spirit to say, I shouldn't be acting like I got it all together. I'm saying that to say is love is an action word. Stop telling people you're a believer if you're not going to love them where they are. Facts. I don't care what they did, how they did it, or whatever else you can pull out. Remember you. Remember last year when you was trying to hide it and God had to expose it. Remember how God dealt with you. Lord, I ain't going to do it again, but oh snap, there it is. <laughs> Remember, before we can sit here and say, murderers are weird. No, you're a lying person and you're weird too. You at home be weird. You get what I'm saying? Just because somebody ain't see it. Remember, God sees it. Amen. I'm preaching already, y'all. This is facts. We got to transform the church because everybody should be running in the door, not for you, but for Jesus. Because they met Jesus from you. Why, Gio, are you smiling when you just lost your house? Because God got me. But you don't see him, though. Why is that important? Because being in Christ, being in Christ gives you everything. Do me a favor, love me. Go get JJ for me. I'm going to use him again. Being in Christ gives you everything. Elder Ty, Elder Mar, and Brother Levi, I'm going to use y'all this morning. Because I need you to see this, why it's important. It's important because if you learn to stay put, you don't have to do no work. When I say do no work, I'm not sitting right here, son. Right I'm not saying don't do no work as if you're not supposed to keep fighting for righteousness and stuff like that. You don't have to do that hour work no more. Because that's now God's job. Amen. Elder, can you come here real quick? Elder, I'm not Martha. <laughs> you're going to be the last person, Elder Tyre. JJ is considered in Christ. He's sitting in Christ. This is what Christ wants all of us. Do me a favor. When you're in Christ, Christ now is positioned to cover you. Amen. Right? Now check this out. I decided to use Elder Marv, you know, because, you know, I mean, he, he's not as tall as Brother Levi or Brother Tom, right? So just take this as the baby, the baby stage of being rooted in Christ, right? You're in Christ. Now Christ is in front of you, but the only way Christ is going to grow in you is the more knowledge, which means the more scriptures you fuel into you to give Christ something to work with. Amen. Do that make sense? Amen. We call that faith. Amen. We call that faith. So now he's in the baby stage. So now it's JJ's job not to move. The Bible says we are tree planted by the rivers of water. Unmovable, right? We don't, he's not supposed to move. He's supposed to grow in Christ. Which literally means if Christ is in front of him, he, he don't have to look to the left or the right to get a word. All he got to do is just look in front of him, look to the hill that's in front of him. Because although the, Christ is a baby, it's still bigger than him. I understand, look how skinny JJ and short JJ is, and look at the comparison to how Christ is in him. It may not be as tall as what you're going to see, you get what I'm saying, but it's, it's still Christ that's bigger than him. So you're supposed to lean and glean from the Jesus that's in him, right? Do me a favor. Uh, Brother Levi, come here. Yep, yep, yep. The more he grows, right? Now check this out. The more he grows in Christ, Check out what's happening. Christ just grew a statue. Wow. He just grew a statue. So he's just like double the size. Right? What did JJ do? Did he do any outer work? No. Wow. He's just stayed put. Amen. Amen. Why is he stressing in Christ? Doesn't make sense because Christ just grew, so he should get double peace. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He should get double joy yeah. because he's in Christ. Oh man, he took your job away. Why is he stressing? Christ would now grow and double. Come here, Elder Tom. 
You said it. <laughs> we don't have a big stage here, so that's why we're praying for a new building. Amen. So our pops is a little ghetto, so all right, I'm sorry. <laughs> he stays rooted in Christ. Now check this out. Do you see JJ? Follow the voice, man. 
my sheep knows my voice. And a stranger they will not follow. That's scripture, right? So when he hear me calling him, his faith, because he already got the word in him, should obey the voice that's calling him because he can recognize the voice from scripture. JJ, JJ, come here. Come sit down. Get back in position. You, you don't even realize how much you're in the spirit, son. You don't even realize it. Get up here. Get back in position. The question is, he got back in position, right? But the question is, what's different? He didn't pick up stuff along the way. Too long. I'm a church baby. I'm a church baby. 
And even when I did sin, what caused me back wasn't all the time because I went to a service. It was the knowledge that was already imprinted in me. It was the word that was already imprinted in me. Because now when I'm sitting here drinking too much, I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, you know that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Come on, man. Well, I'm getting scriptures in my head. You know, I'm trying to do my thing. You know, that's how you know. Because that's what, that's what the word was imprinted in me. Check this out. If you're never saved right, how can the word remind you of what Jesus said? If you're not saved right, if you're just saved thinking that God want to make you a millionaire, you, you're not saved right. You're not saved to be a millionaire. You're saved to transform. To transform in the way you look and so that you can transform others that's connected to you. So when we're talking, Paul is talking about wisdom and he's talking about revelation. This is the core running of the church. This is how we need to operate. Through the spirit of wisdom. What we're doing now in this church is revamping. We turn this church upside down and we said whatever falls out, falls out. When we put it back down, whatever stays, it stays. Because that whatever stays is the foundation that we need to keep. If faces change, to God be the glory. If things change, to God be the glory, because that's all we want. So it causes us to keep revamping, to make sure we stay in Christ. What would you think we're going to do? But revamping means you're going to lose membership. We're going to stay in Christ. We started with five people. We can continue with that and so be it. I'd rather be with five people than be with five demons. I need to stay in Christ. I can't pass the demons because demons don't want to change because that's their nature. They want to stay the same. But I need to pass the people that realize their nature has been transformed out of sin and they're in the marvelous life because they're in Christ. Do you see that? Check this out. Paul is praying not Your, your face glowing, your body was fit, and then you had to give him a red 
Reggie and now Reggie Benjamin. You know we been with Reggie too. And you know she been with Reggie too. You down here looking at that. That make you look like a fool. And you sitting back like, like the prodigal son. My daddy roaches. His pigs and servants live better than this. What? He down there like, look, I mean, last time I'm getting into my car and I was I got into my car and I was wondering. I was like, oh, why does everybody keep they coming to the car? Then they just run away. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, the car, I don't know somebody hit me, but is it that bad to scare you off? No, what it was is over in this corner where we picked the trash at, there were so many rats jumping on each other. Wow. They were having a party going in. And so I was like, why do they keep doing that? I went out and looked. I said, oh, snap, let me get back. I don't know what I was going back in the church for, but I'm good. I'm just, I'm just going to go home. I'm just going to go home. If them rats are jumping like that, they're gonna, they, I feel like they're going to look at me and try to jump on me. You had dogs. We were walking in dogs, and their dogs start running. I'm like, that's, what you know, that's wisdom right there. But I'm saying it to say is, we bypass wisdom, and we join in with jumping rats. Jesus. The crazy part is, rats, no matter how much you sit here and you try to give them healthy food, they still crave dirtiness. They only thrive in darkness. And they only want to be around swamp and moist areas. And so now, you look weird when you take your light and you smear it into that darkness now. Wow. And you make Christ look weird because now you choose to forget him to get what you want. But the last time I checked, Brother Tom, what I wanted in Christ, you know what I mean? It got me nothing but headaches. Some of us can look at our kids and say, I got four kids from not being in Christ. Oh no, do me. Is the kids wrong? No. But sin got me there. Because I had to raise four kids by myself. I had to raise four kids, and my work had to be twice as hard. People don't like this kind of teaching, but this is a reminder to don't go back. Yeah. Don't go back. Take your wisdom and your revelation and transform the people that surround you. They call you names. I like it. I like it. I like it. The boy on the court, baby lawyer, was calling me corny. I said, I'm corny. I'll give you that because I'm overweight. I I'll be corny. But you, you can't call me corny if you ain't making no shots. What did he do? He got upset again. He like, because you're right. I ain't making no shots. You know what he's trying to do? Overcompensate. I'm going to try to do this. Oh, damn it, tops. <laughs> In basketball, that means he threw the ball over the court. <laughs> he threw the ball over the court. He's sitting here trying to cross me over and cross himself. Where did the ball go? Out of bounds. He started looking like a fool because of what he decided to succumb to. I'm saying that to say is, Paul is telling us, once the eyes of your heart is enlightened, it is your job to go down and be light. Don't conform. Let people line up to the Jesus in your heart. Does this make sense? Yeah. And now when we do that, they won't see Brother Levi, but they'll see the saint of Brother Levi. Amen. Does this make sense? Yeah. This is important. Let's go to verse 19 real quick. And what the surpassing greatness of his power towards us who believe that these are the accordance, these are with the accordance with the workings of his strength and might. This is so important because this is not God, God Paul saying that God is, is showing us how powerful he is. This is showing us how much power he put into his son. Amen. Do you see that? He put this kind of power. It's not a level. This is love. Go to John 3 and you'll see John 3 says this. You get the famous chapter of Nicodemus Nicodemus says that, you know, how can you be born again? Do you get what I'm saying? And you, him and Jesus is talking about being born again. But then you also see this. Check this out. You see the Bible saying that God gave Jesus the spirit without limit. Wow. You see him saying that he gave him the spirit without limit. That was God's love showing up in Christ for us. The Holy Spirit without limit wasn't given to us, but it was given to his son. If we give it to his son, what do we get by default? An inheritance of what? 
unlimited usage of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You're wondering how can you fight against your struggle when God is saying, get in me and my spirit. I, last time I checked, I feel God already, Brother Gio. He said, Paul is praying, take this issue from me. And what did God say to him? Christ said, my grace is sufficient for you. Oh, God. 
God is trying to break you because he wants to break your heart from the things that break his heart. Your heart is breaking his heart, but it's hard. So you gotta sit here, he gotta sit here and knock the walls to your heart down so that you can understand him. And guess what? If we stay in a hard state, you know the only thing that's soft.
not to share, not to share it with you, but to control it from you. Wow. Amen. Amen. He's Lord because he's the owner. Yes. Look up what Lord is. There's two verses you're going to get. You're going to get Lord in all capital letters, which the Hebrews used to call it the Lord God Jehovah. So then when you see the Lord in all capital letters, we're talking about God the Father. But when you see Lord with a capital L and the rest is lowercase, that means owner, master. The, and we're talking about at that moment, not your landlord, talking about Jesus. Jesus is not coming into your heart just to sit here and ask you your opinion. Amen, amen. How do you feel today? See, in the top board, this, this is where we got to stop with the Bible. Jesus. We don't read, we read none of that and for me to go around like, you know, what do you think the scriptures are saying? How, how did it make you feel? No. We read the scriptures for us to say, what does it mean? Come on. Come on. How can I obey it? Now change it. How can I obey it? Why is this important? If we learn that he's a Lord, we're not trying to tell him what to do and we're submitting him. We're bringing all of us under subjection to him. And we're Miserable people. And this is 
where God is coming on you at. He don't want you in the spirit of repeat. Yeah. He wants you in a place of deliverance yeah. so that you can get healed, yeah. so that you can get free, yeah. and so that you can be what he created you to be. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If you didn't hear nothing I said today, hear this. Repent and believe. Yeah. We all got one job to do. And just because I've been saved for a matter of time don't mean I need to stop repenting. Just because the length of my salvation, it don't, it don't stop me from apologizing. And please, I think, and I just felt the drop, Brother Gio. Please stop apologizing. Well, if I did something to you,